It's well known by now that a decent chunk of the Doom and Doom 2 soundtrack are heavily inspired by rock and metal bands of the 80s and 90s. For the faster paced and more frantic maps, these riffs were a match made in heaven, or maybe a match made in hell depending on your perspective. I was thinking about it the other day, and I started to wonder, which band has the most representation among the midis that Bobby Prince made for Doom 1 and Doom 2? The only way to get to the bottom of this question will be to go through track by track and tally them up. Let's find the answer to this little question about Doom's development and intertwined history with the world of rock and metal music. Okay, so first things first, E1M1. This is probably the most contentious song in the Doom soundtrack in terms of people trying to work out what riff actually inspired it. Some people say it's Master of Puppets, some people say it's Hooked by Dry or DRI, some people say it's any number of 80s and 90s riffs that use this exact same structure. And pro tip, there's hundreds of songs out there that technically fit the bill. Hell, even according to Bobby Prince, this riff was written before listening to any metal music at all. He was just divinely blessed with the gift of knowing how to write metal before even hearing it, which is surely a god-tier skill. So what's the real answer? What song is it based off of? Well, it's similar to No Remorse by Metallica. The harmonizing guitar about halfway through No Remorse is almost a one-to-one -one match with the E1M1 harmonizing guitar near the end. Sonic Clang made a video putting this argument to rest about 14 years ago, so go check that out. The link is in the description. However, since Bobby himself says no one song was used as an inspiration, we'll have to tentatively put this one down as no band in particular. Let's move on to a less contentious track. E1M4's song, Kitchen Ace and Taking Names, is based off of Rise by Pantera. So that means Pantera is the first band to jump onto the scoreboard. One thing I will say is that Kitchen Ace is one of the happiest songs in all of Doom, sounding flat out upbeat compared to most of the other tracks, and yet it still manages to fit in perfectly and be a badass riff. I wouldn't have it any other way. The next example of inspiration is a little murky. The song for E1M9, Hiding the Secrets, is loosely based on We Die Young by Alice in Chains. Thanks to some notes left in the metadata of the unused midis made for Doom, we know it to be true. While the riffs aren't all that similar, one of the beta midis is a one-to-one -one recreation of We Die Young, and the drum track is 100% identical to the one used for Hiding the Secrets, just sped up a little bit. In my opinion, mostly this song comes from the mind of Bobby Prince, but since the drums are a direct match, let's put this one down as a track for Alice in Chains. The next one is an easy one. E2M1's track, I Saw the Demons, is very closely based on Big Gun by ACDC.
It's cool to see classic rock being represented in a very clear way here. Rock music fits Doom just as well as metal does, and even better sometimes, in my humble opinion. If there's any doubt about its origins, well, the metadata for this MIDI, as noted by Bobby Prince, directly credits ACDC. We have to wait a whole other episode to hear another riff lifted from a metal or rock band, but E3M1 starts off brutal, with Pantera's Mouth for War. There's no debate here, this is a direct one-to-one -one copy, and hell do I love it. E3M2, Slough of Despair, uses a track titled Donna to the Rescue. This riff seems to be based on Body Counts in the House, which is of course by Body Count. E3M3 keeps up the trend of using great metal songs with a track called Deep Into the Code, which lifts the main riff from Slayer's Behind the Crooked Cross. Surely an excellent fit for a confusing map this deep in the bowels of hell. Doom 1 wraps up with this, where you face the Spider Mastermind. The fast-paced, frantic song, Sergeant D and the SOD, is used for this epic battle, or not-so-epic battle, depending on how you feel. The MIDI is epic either way, though. Moving on up to Doom 2, it's a while before any clear inspiration comes up, but in Dead Simple, which uses the track Sean's Got the Shotgun, the similarity to Slayer's South of Heaven is very clear. Listen to the drums in particular. Next up is the track Into Sandy City, famously used for the pit. While it's not at all clear on a casual listen, this song apparently started out as sex type thing by Stone Temple Pilots. In the unused beta music, there's an actual MIDI rendition of sex type thing, but it sounds almost nothing alike.
Oddly, after being changed around, Into Sandy City ended up sounding more like the music from Chopping Mall. I think this is a pure coincidence, but listen to how similar they sound side by side. It's pretty bizarre. Refueling Base, the only map in Doom 2 created by Tom Hall, uses the song The Demon's Dead, which is based on Black Sabbath's After All the Dead. It's not an exact match, but it's close enough to be obvious. This is just a little personal note, but I can't believe more Sabbath influence didn't make its way into Doom. It's fucking Sabbath, man! For map 18, The Courtyard, the track Waiting for Romero to play is used, which is pretty much a direct rip of the opening riff of This Love by Pantera. Even though the original track has some heavy riffing that would fit Doom well, using the intro riff and building on that as an ambient piece instead was a really cool decision. Barrels of Fun, Map 23, uses a track called Bye Bye American Pie, which itself is a reference to a well-known Don McLean song. The track itself is actually based very closely on Them Bones by Alice in Chains. This is a prime example of a song that fits the map perfectly. Barrels of Fun is one of my favorite maps for its frantic challenge, and the MIDI couldn't be better suited to that. Map 25, Blood Falls, uses a track called Adrian's Asleep. Once again, this is very closely based on Alice in Chains, this time the song being Angry Chair. And as far as music that actually made it into the games, that's all she wrote. The final tally is as follows. Pantera was used for three songs, 
Alice in Chains was used for three songs, Slayer was used for two songs, ACDC was used for one song, Body Count was used for one song, SOD was used for one song, Stone Temple Pilots was used for one song, and Black Sabbath was used for one song. Oh, uh, and depending on who you ask, Metallica was either used for one or zero songs. So, the winner of this little tally is a tie between two excellent bands, Alice in Chains and Pantera. Really though, it's clear to see the bad boys of it had great tastes in rock and metal in general. It's also interesting to note that there are a bunch of minis written for Doom that were cut before the final game, featuring even more tracks inspired by these badass bands. I have a link in the description to the full Doom soundtrack, including the unused music. I suggest checking it out, I think you'll like it. Before I go, I'd like to thank my patrons who are listed on screen. I really appreciate your generosity and I will have more content on the way soon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.